Yet a new theory, one that fills gaps in the Big Bang theory, suggests reality is vaster still. The Big Bang is one of many, 1980. The Big Bang is a successful theory due to its many verified predictions. It explains the appearance and ratios of chemical elements in interstellar space, and moreover we can actually see the Big Bang with our telescopes. Given the finite speed of light, the farther a telescope peers into space, the farther back it looks in time. We see the moon as it was one second ago, the sun as it was eight minutes ago, the closest stars as they were years ago, and nearby galaxies as they were millions of years ago. Our radio telescopes can look far enough to see the universe when it was just 400,000 years old. At this point in time space was filled with an orange afterglow remaining from shortly after the universe became transparent. This period in time is known as the recombination era. But 400,000 years after the Big Bang, the whole sky would appear orange, as bright as the surface of a star. Filling the sky, it would quickly roast us. Fortunately, the Doppler effect of expanding space has reduced this orange light to the much less energetic microwave range, losing over 99.9% .9 of its energy. The universe fell in temperature from a searing 3000 Kelvin to a bone-chilling 2.7 Kelvin. Cosmic Inflation Despite its successes, there were lingering mysteries not addressed by the original Big Bang Theory. 1. The homogeneity problem, why is the background radiation so uniform in temperature? 2. The flatness problem, why is there so little curvature to space? 3. The monopole problem, where are all the magnetic monopoles? In 1980, Alan Guth, Alexei Starobinsky, and Andre Lind worked out a theory known as cosmic inflation. It is an extension to the Big Bang theory which addresses all these problems. Further, it explains why the universe went bang in the first place and why the universe is still expanding to this day. The theory makes a modest assumption, which is also backed up by particle physics, that the vacuum contains energy. If vacuum energy is non-zero, general relativity predicts space will expand on its own. The greater its energy, the faster it expands. In answering the previous questions, inflation trades four problems for one. It also tells where all the space, matter and energy comes from. The only problem left is from where did this little piece of high energy, self-inflating vacuum originate. Inflation supposes that the vacuum energy was once greater than it is now. So great, in fact, that this high energy vacuum would double in about a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. But this high energy state is unstable and can decay, much like a radioactive particle. When the vacuum decays, its vast energy gets dumped into space. This energy manifests as spontaneous particle creation. The thermostat is raised and the temperature of the universe soars to 10 to the power of 27 degrees Celsius. If inflation happened, then for it to be consistent with observations it must have gone on for at least 10 to the power of minus 32 seconds. In this time the spatial doubling causes space to stretch by a factor of 10 to the power of 26 in every direction, an increase in volume by a factor of 10 to the power of 78 dot but inflation could have gone on for much longer. Alan Guth thinks it is reasonable to suppose that inflation went on for twice the bare minimum time. That implies the whole universe is 10 to the power of 78 times bigger than the part we can see. Once the vacuum decays to a lower energy state the rate of expansion slows. This is why the universe now doubles in volume after billions of years, rather than in a fraction of a nanosecond. Eternal Inflation Observational evidence supporting inflation came in 1992, with data from the Cosmic Background Explorer COB, satellite. The patterns of variation seen in the radiation are consistent with cosmic fluctuations occurring at all scales of space as the universe rapidly expanded. The rapid expansion of space turned the observable universe into a sort of giant microscope. 
The pattern of radiation and the distribution of galaxies across the night sky are gravitational imprints of quantum fluctuations that occurred at the microscopic scales when the universe was small. Following inflation these variations were magnified to galactic proportions. There is however, a shocking consequence of inflation. Once it begins, it never fully stops. This is the idea of eternal inflation. Inflation is eternal because for inflation to start, the high energy vacuum must grow faster than it decays. But if it grows faster than it decays it leads to a runaway reaction that never ends. Consequently, there remain parts of the universe that are still inflating rapidly. That means parts of the universe have for billions of years been growing at fantastic rates. Whenever and wherever the vacuum decays to a lower energy state, the result is another Big Bang and a new region of slowly expanding space. The total number of Big Bangs is therefore unbounded, and grows exponentially with time. In a way, steady state theory is vindicated. New matter and energy are created in the void of rapidly expanding space, it just doesn't happen in the slowly expanding space of our neck of the universe. In summary, if eternal inflation is right, then our Big Bang was just one of an infinite number of Big Bangs.